Oh my god! Ladies and gentlemen, what is this? This is an amazing species of moth. It is known as the Madagascar bullseye moth, or Anterina siraca. And today I will briefly show you how I managed to breed them in captivity. This species is very easy for beginners. If you've always wanted to raise moth, then this is your cue to get started. The scientific name is Anterina siraca, and they're endemic to the island of Madagascar and the Comoros Islands. So first, we get started with the eggs. The eggs of these moths are available online on several websites. Some people order them, or they order cocoons. But we are starting with eggs right now. The eggs are easily incubated in petri dishes or small plastic containers. It takes about two weeks for the caterpillars to come out. And at this point they are very small and vulnerable. They don't look very spectacular yet. Can you see these small things? They are the baby caterpillars and they need food immediately. First you have to pick leaves of plants that they like. This insect can eat many kinds of plants. Here are just some suggestions. Pause the video if you want to have a closer look at them. Personally I prefer to use privet, common ivy, sweet gum, willow or cherry. The next thing that you do is you grab a plastic container and then add a layer of paper towels. Then on top, place some type of leaves. The leaves of a plant that they like, of course. The next step is to add the caterpillars. Use a paintbrush to transfer them if you can. The babies are very soft and vulnerable. And if you use your fingers, you may end up squishing them by accident. So scoop them up carefully and place them in a plastic box with food plants. Soon you will notice that they will start eating the leaves. Keep the container clean if you can and give them fresh food often. Then in some time they will have transformed into the second life stage. At this point the caterpillars demand a bigger enclosure. It's obvious they have transformed because suddenly they've become black in color with orange spines. I typically fill a bottle, a can or a flask with tap water. And then I place cuttings of food plant in the water to keep it fresh. Next I obtain a large enclosure, like a big plastic box. With a large hole that I cut in the lid for ventilation. Then I place them in a bigger enclosure, typically a large plastic box. The caterpillars can free roam on the plant and eat the fresh leaves. Over time the caterpillars become really beautiful. Right here is the third instar. A little bit prettier but nothing too remarkable. Once they transform again we can see their real and true beauty. This is the fourth instar. Wow, is that not amazing? In terms of colors this species is very variable. These are some of the most colorful caterpillars you'll ever see. And this is the fifth in star, the final life stage. They can be black, yellow or green, but most of mine are green right now. If your caterpillars made it to this stage, I'd like to say congratulations to you. Because they are very close to spinning cocoons now. The final life stage lasts the longest. They can feed for about two weeks. Make sure to replace the food plant often and keep the containers clean. The key to raising moths is good hygiene. Caterpillars can become sick from dirty containers containing too much of their own excrement. I clean the containers every two to three days. When the caterpillars are about to spin cocoons, something amazing happens. The caterpillars turn green and blue. Wow, is that not utterly and completely incredible? Now guys, I have a little secret for you. But before the caterpillars of this species spin a cocoon, they turn blue. Don't believe me? Let me show you. So these are three caterpillars of Anterina siraca. Here in the back we have the black form that I showed you earlier and the green one. But what's happening with this one? 
Amazing, isn't it? Soon they start spinning cocoons. Some caterpillars don't bother to spin cocoons, however. Some individuals can pupate on the floor and leave litter or substrate. The cocoons are porous and have thin silk with large ventilation holes in it. Very interesting. Over time I gathered like a dozen of cocoons and pupa. But what do we do with them? Good question, friends. Let me show you how to take care of the cocoons. So, you have raised your first moths to cocoon. How do we incubate the cocoons? It's very easy. You just keep them at room temperature. And what you need is an enclosure like this. This is called a pop-up cage. It, you can fold it, but most importantly it's made from netting. This is really important. Netting is the perfect material for cocoons. The moths have to crawl up. They have to be able to climb and have grip. Don't use glass, don't use plastic. Next, here I have some of the cocoons that we raised. It's not really great to see it right now because indoors the lighting is a bit bad. But as you can see on the bottom I placed a towel, yeah, the same towel you can use to dry yourself off after a shower. And I take the pupa and I place them in here in the cage. If you are a newbie or a beginner, this is the perfect method to incubate them. You don't need to do much else, except wait. Now this can take a long time. Usually the moths, they come out in about a month or two. But I've seen, um, I've seen them stay in the cocoon for like eight months or longer for some reason. It seems intrinsically a bit unpredictable. Do it just like that. There you go. And if you keep them warm on room temp for a few months, they will hatch. What you can do is you can keep them humid by spraying with water. There you go. And then you wait a lot till the first moths come out. Wow, here they are. The moths are just amazing, aren't they? Let me show you some more of them quickly before I answer the final question. How do we make them? Because in order to complete the life cycle, we must pair them in captivity. I'll show you how. Now guys, mating this piece is very easy. And if you follow my channel and you're a fan of my channel and you see my videos, you will know that mating some species of moths in captivity is actually very hard. Not in this case. I'm pretty sure these moths, they will mate almost automatically as long as you put them in a dark and warm place. That's about it. And that's what we are going to do. I'm gonna put the light out, go away and check back tomorrow. Pretty sure they're gonna make tonight. All right, folks, next morning, have our moths mated. Let's take a small look. Spoiler alert, of course. Now, Antirina Suraka is one of those moths that are extremely easy to mate. Like if you have males and females, it's almost guaranteed that they will hook up. And that's what has happened, of course. So this is a male and a female who are mating. If their abdomens are attached like this, that's how you are sure that yes, they have uh, done the lovemaking last night. Collect the eggs in a plastic container and incubate them. It will take about two weeks for them to hatch. Two weeks later you will have babies and completed the life cycle. Yay, congratulations! You are currently watching my secret second YouTube channel. If you want to find my main channel on YouTube, you will find much better quality content. The channel you are looking at right now only has clips, outtakes, deleted content and short summaries of long videos. Find my channel, it's named Bart Coppens on YouTube. I also have a web series called Moth Cycles, which I show much more extensive breeding tutorials. If you're a moth fan, you may want to check out my second channel. Thanks for watching, bro. See wow, you the next wow, time. Wow, wow. They are just so incredible. Wow, guys. I am the luckiest and happiest man on the planet right now. Just look at that.